and welcome to another video from sickmaths.co.uk where you can find lots of free math videos and this video is about well it's for the mechanics one module in a level maths for the edXL syllabus I suppose and uh, it's all about moments and what are what are moments well I'd like to show you this little spanner to explain a few things um, when you turn a spanner you t tend to put your hand at the end of the spanner isn't it because you get a lot more turning power that way if you use the same force here you wouldn't get that much turning power just the way it works isn't it so basically what I'm saying is turning power is equal to the distance from the turning point which is there to there um, times the force so distance from the turning point times the force is turning power but the proper word for turning power is moment okay the moment of a uh, force is its distance times the force okay so and taking moments is a, a word you need to know or understand so if you're taking moments say about this pivot okay what you do is you look at all the clockwise force moments and minus the anti-clockwise moments and then you get the moments of the force so um, here are this is a clockwise force so is that clockwise force because it pushes it upwards making it go around that way this pushes it down going around that way but this one pushes it down makes it go around the other way so that's what moment taking moments is about or let's give you a bit more example a bit more explanation uh, you got your pivot here I do this distance times this force plus this distance times that force because they're both making it go round clockwise minus um, uh, this distance times that force that should equal zero because uh, most of these questions all these questions are in equilibrium okay so which means they should always equal zero or another way of saying it is this for this distance times this force um, plus this distance times this force is equal to this distance times that force because that's the anti-clockwise one and as I said before these are these two are the clockwise ones clockwise forces or moments I should say um, so that's that kind of explained um, you always get uniform rod and the reason is that basically if it's a uniform rod you can pretend or it's not really pretending, you can mathematically say that the whole weight of the rod acts right in the middle of the rod and that actually makes it really easy to take moments for the rod because otherwise it would be really confusing because you know when you take moments you have to say a distance to a certain point now the rod is spread out throughout the whole rod so uh, where would the weight of the rod act? well if you say it's a uniform rod you can basically basically mathematically say that the weight of the rod acts in the middle of the rod which makes it really easy to take moments anyway let's get on with uh, the actual questions uh, make the questions are really simple once you know all this stuff um, we want to find the reaction at B obviously when you've got a rod acting on a pivot point okay is it's got pressure on the pivot point and there's a reaction back from the pivot point on the rod so um, yep so let's work out that force so basically when we talk about the reaction at B um, we actually call that force B um, itself okay we we have to give it a name don't we the force so we call it B uh, and if there was another pivot there okay so we've got two pivots here for example I'd call this reaction the reaction over there C and the reaction over there B for example and call that reaction over there A these are all these triangles are basically pivot points okay now uh, what else is there to explain oh, I should have explained you can actually take moments wherever you want okay so that's another strange idea uh, just a bit like the strange idea that the weight of the rod acts right in the middle of the rod it can be explained but I can't be bothered really um, uh, what was the other thing so I can actually take moments about any point okay because basically the quick explanation is if it's not spinning around it's an equilibrium okay and it's not spinning around any point so if I take make a, my pivot point anywhere it should be an equilibrium about that pivot point it's not a very good explanation but it should do for you hopefully um, 
So, as I was saying, you can take moments about any point, and to answer this question, I'm going to take moments about that point there. Okay, because um, as you'll see, when I take moments, well, all, all of these these two forces are clockwise, and this is the anti-clockwise force, the reaction at B, which is going upwards, of course. Okay, so I say, uh, since I know this is eight meters long, okay, and the weight of the rod is acting in the middle of the rod, so the the weight okay the mass of the rod is 20 kilograms so the weight is 20 times g because when, whenever you work out weight you just times it by g don't you okay the mass times g which is 9.8 if you didn't know that already um so you to take moments you do 4 because that's halfway through the rod times 20 g plus 8 times 5g because there's a particle stuck at the end of this rod okay so 8 times so 4 times 20g plus 8 times 5g should equal 5 times b okay b is the reaction at b so uh, putting that into an equation you can rearrange it and realize that b must equal 24 g's uh, just to explain to you really quickly that's 80 g's that's another 40 g's that's 120 g's divided by 5 gives you 24 okay so that's one done b example question b find tension t okay when i say tension t we're pretending this is a string which has obviously got tension so the string is pulling it up over here to keep it all balanced uh, about this pivot here um, oh I forgot to explain right uh, the reason why I took the, for part A why did I do the moments about this point well if I took the moments about say this point here I can take moments about anywhere I want okay I'd have T uh, I'd have a distance times t and a distance times t b there and there'll be two things I don't know and you can't work out stuff if you've got two things you don't know but by taking moments about there um, well you automatically basically make this this moment disappear this t disappear because uh, if I'm trying to take moments about here the distance to t is zero isn't it because my my pivot is straight underneath the point t so when i for the moments for this particular thing will be zero the distance is zero times the force t which is still zero so the moments for t about this point is zero so that's basically a good or clever way of making or ignoring this point and uh, working at b uh, so, as I was saying, for question B, I'm trying to work out the tension T. Now, there are two techniques in this topic called moments. You either take moments or resolve vertically. That means, look at all the forces going straight up. Uh, this force and this force, T and B, should be balanced with the forces going straight down, 20G and 5G. So you've got 25Gs going downwards, and you've got T plus B going upwards. But we just worked out that B was 24G. Okay, So we don't really have two unknowns. We've just got one unknown, which is a T. So basically, T must be 1G, because that's 24G, plus another G makes the 25Gs there. Okay, so I only decided to take uh, or resolve vertically once I knew what B was. Otherwise, I'd be crazy, wouldn't I? Because I still have two unknowns equals 25G, so that didn't really help me. But since I knew what B was, I could easily work out T was. Okay, so hopefully this is getting easier and easier. Once you get used to the whole topic, it's pretty simple stuff. Um, now we're going to work out this distance x. We've got a force 20 newtons. Uh, we've got a four. We've got the weight of the whole rod acting downwards because it's got mass 4 so it's got weight 4g acting in the middle of the rod it's a 6 meter long rod so that means it's 3 meters from the end here so taking moments about a as it says here that's and counting clockwise is the first thing uh, clockwise forces are 4G times 3, which is 12G, which balances with this anti-clockwise force, which is X times 20 Newtons, uh, 20X basically. Um, so rearranging gives X equals 5.88. Just take that 20 to underneath and divide by 20. So yep, that's very simply simply done. Just taking moments about that point helped me work out the distance X. Again, always uniform rod.
rods yeah that's that's why I'm allowed to say the the weight acts in the middle of the rod and and our final example uh what's going on here I've got a force x and I have to work out what that force x is oh but what's special about this particular question um is that the rod is on the verge of tilting so if you got two pivot points here and you got a force x there basically it means that this bit of the rod is about to lift off isn't it it's just about to lift off okay now when it's just about to lift off that means it's barely touching this pivot point here it's barely resting on it which means there is no let's say let's take it to the maximum level where it is it's not really touching it it's got zero force uh, pressure uh, laying down onto this pivot point which means there's no reaction force either now the fact that there's no reaction force makes it really easy because there is one less force going on uh, so if I take moments about C for example and we know this whole um, rod is 16 meters long which means the the weight of the rod is acting at 8 meters along okay so if that's nine meters there and that's eight meters that means there's only one meter left over there and uh, what else does it mean if that's nine meters long that means this is a further seven meters from the pivot to a okay so if I'm taking moments I'll say seven times X okay that's the moment for this force uh, equals 1 times 5g and I completely ignore this force because there is no force since it's on the verge of tilting there's no reaction force because there's next to no force going down on it because it's it's tilting so this is almost lifted off already so anyway so basically just remember verge of tilting means there one of the forces go completely there's no reaction force there okay um, and common sense tells you which uh, you can't say there's no reaction force there because this is you know if it's pushing down and there this is the point that's staying on and that's the point that's going up so there's no reaction force there I've said it like three times now let's get on with this so 7x uh, equals 1 times 5g because that distance is 1 um, so basically 7x equals 1 times 5g div 1 times 5g where 9.8g is 9.8 basically gives you 49 so 7x equals equals 49 so 49 divided by 7 equals x which is x basically means x equals 7 newtons and that's it really